high performance at all costs. Those have been the words that Wall Street has lived and died by for the last 10 years. Well, that conversation has now changed. I'm joined today by Jacob Lovelace of Lucera, and I want to talk to Jacob about high performance and what it really means when we sacrifice operational risk for performance. Jacob, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So when we talk about high performance and risk, operational risk, what has historically been the equation that folks have lived by, and why is that changing? Well, I mean, the reality of infrastructure is this. You've got security, reliability, and performance. If you go extreme in any one direction, you have to sacrifice something else, right? You have to sacrifice one or the other two. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think kind of as you look at the history of electronic trading, especially over the last 10 years, uh, latency arbitrage was prevalent, and, and you wanted to push systems to the edge of, of capability, right? You want to go mm -hmm. for extreme performance. But uh, the, 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 those days are behind us, right? The, the idea of you know, being highly specialized in an individual asset, they're kind of gone. And the reason why they're gone is kind of everything that happens in technology. Barriers to entry are lower, mm -hmm. right? There are more players in the space. There's, you know, it's now easier for the everyday man to, to kind of have access to this technology. And so, you know, if, you, if you're going to give up on performance and kind of bring things back, it's time to refocus on reliability because you're going to have to go into more marketplaces. You're going to have to do more things. And, and, you know, every time you connect to something else, there's a new operational risk there that you didn't see before. And, and I, I think but the failure of night is, is showing us but what that can be. When mean. we look at that, we look yeah. at this sort of moving away from specialization. We saw over the last, I don't know, in the beginning of this, this decade, um, you know, people very focused on high performance. Let's go into high frequency trading. That market obviously is, is, is diminishing now. Right. And folks are having to cast their, their eyes wider afield. What does that mean for those organizations that are realizing that I can no longer be just this very focused, very narrowly trading organization. What does it mean when we talk about high performance on, on, on demand and high performance infrastructure? If, if I can no longer be just this simple one shop you know, uh, trading organization that focuses on, let's say, equities or, or FX or something like that, that right. be everywhere. Right. It means you're going to need an infrastructure that's going to allow you to experiment mm -hmm. in new asset classes as you try to take technology and techniques and algorithms and methodologies that you've developed in one asset and learn how to transfer that risk across assets, right? So uh, if you look at an equity trader or you know, a historical mm -hmm. equity market maker, right, you get into ETFs. And when you get into ETFs, you kind of get into other asset classes that are linked to those. You, you're going to start getting into futures. You get into futures, then you're going to want to get into treasury right. futures. Treasury futures get you to treasury cash. Treasury cash gets you to options, because that's the risk-free rate. And so you're learning how to transfer these risks across asset classes. But to do that, you need to experiment. Right, you need to but go try something new. As a broker or as a, a, one of these shops, can I do that myself with my own infrastructure? What's I mean, the drawback uh, for me doing it on difficult. my own little box in my own little uh, trading area? I mean, I think it's difficult because you're, you, just because you were in one particular asset mm -hmm. doesn't mean everybody else wasn't in the other one. So you, you need to enter the field and you need to be on par, right? You, you need to come into the asset class um, you, you need to bring the right level of infrastructure to bear on the problem, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to be co-located, right? You, you've, if, if, you're, if you're in London, you've got to be in LD4. If you're in New York, you've got to be in NY4. Um, if you're in Chicago, you've got to be in CERMAC, um, and you've got to have connectivity to Aurora, right? You get into the asset, you've got to start in the right place. But then you have to have on demand with the ability to scale to kind of support that experiment an infrastructure that's capable of running mission critical systems mm -hmm. at a level of performance that's competitive, right? So, you know, Lucera as, as, as an on-demand infrastructure provider, our customer base is, you know, started as high frequency. Uh, our customer base mm -hmm. is and, you know, was and is high frequency. And we have exchanges as clients, right? Exchanges, you know, are incredibly latency sensitive, mission critical and latency sensitive. And what's interesting is you kind of look at our customers, some are using us for experiments, they're, they're using us to go find new marketplaces. Mm -hmm. and, and if volatility goes up or if that trade starts to make sense or they're able to transfer that risk, then they can grow on us, right? They can grow and, and they can go discover and, and, mm -hmm. and learn how to do that and be competitive in the market. And then the flip side is true, right? So, uh, you know, your infrastructure needs 12 months from now are going to be dictated by volume and volatility 12 months from now. And let's call a spade a spade. If you could predict that, we'd probably be having this conversation on your island. Now, why, why hasn't the marketplace moved to more of this on-demand, high infrastructure sort of environment? I mean, historically, Wall Street has been 
pretty conservative when it comes to infrastructure investments. They've wanted to keep things close to field, you know, close to their chest. They don't want anyone to know. Right. What is forcing them to change? What is forcing them to, to open up their eyes? I mean, there was certainly a time when there was there was alpha in the infrastructure itself, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, obviously those times are behind us. Uh, and I think the real question is, why haven't we seen an on-demand offering, you know, before Lucera really take hold in the market? Why has every other industry adopted this kind of on-demand infrastructure model, right? You couldn't have Netflix if you didn't have Amazon, mm -hmm. right? Things like that. So, and the answer is, you know, in our opinion, it's performance, right? So the, the, the traditional model of on-demand means virtualization, right. right? And what that means is you're gonna take a piece of hardware, you're gonna add a piece of software, right? To emulate up to another piece of software. And you can't do that and have performance, right? So uh, we recognize that very early on and this level of virtualization, which means you know you can take a machine and you can punch out an operating system on it that looks, acts, touches, feels, and smells like it's its own machine. You have root, you can apply any security policy you want, you can reboot it, and yet it runs without performance penalty. It's running mm -hmm. at bare metal. Uh, that's how we're able to run exchanges on it. That's how we're able to run high frequency customers on and it. And people can scale up and scale down and as you, they need to and you without can scale having up and down. massive capital infrastructure. Exactly. Approach. So if you start to see volume tick up, right, or start to see volatility tick up, right, now now you're talking about kind of operational alpha, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go I'm going to go bring more infrastructure to bear on that problem, right? And the inverse, right? So if you all kind of a sudden volatility volatility goes reverts down back to normal as as is it in today's market, then right. you can then you can scale back down, you can orchestrate back. Right. Down. And if you look at you know, there's a lot of shops that uh, you know, kind of uh, Gecko joining mm -hmm. you know Knight was kind of a, a view into what happens when when equity volatility goes down? Um, but they're still sitting on the infrastructure, right? right? Uh, 165 million dollars in infrastructure, and and you need that flexibility, right? That flexibility means you you know you don't have capex, everything's opex, which means you have more money on the balance sheet to put into margin, more money on the balance sheet to put into research, more money on the balance sheet to put into the things that make you different, right? Mm -hmm. J.P. Morgan is not J.P. Morgan because of the servers it right. runs on. That, that, that whole play, you know, that, that whole, you know, as you said, alpha and infrastructure has been basically commoditized out Absolutely. over the last five years. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a natural byproduct of the fact that technology gets better over time and easier mm -hmm. to adopt. Well, Jacob, thank you very much for joining us here on Tab Forum. I think we're going to see a lot more about this of uh, infrastructure on demand and what really does mean, what does it really mean when you talk about high performance infrastructure on demand. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me.